Hello and welcome to the January Wednesday webinar from the IEA Clean Coal Centre. My name is Benedicta and I'm the Communications Officer here. Our monthly webinars are based on our technical reports, which are available from our website www.iea-coal.org. Residents of member countries and employees of sponsoring organizations can download our reports at no charge after a one-off registration. Please visit our website for details. The subject for today's webinar is Support Mechanisms for Co-Firing Biomass, presented by Sing Sang. The report on this topic will be published later in the spring. Here you go. Thank you, Benedicta. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Xing Zhang. I'm the technical author at IEA Clinical Center. Today, I'm going to present my current research on support mechanisms for coal firing biomass with coal. In my webinar today, I will review the policy and the coal firing development status for six countries selected from three different regions. First, I would like to introduce a couple of concepts I'm going to use throughout this webinar. Broadly speaking, there are two types of support mechanisms, FIT and RPS. FIT, short for feed-in tariff, is a price-based policy. It matches the difference between the market price of electricity and the cost of electricity generated from renewable sources. Renewable Portfolio Standard, briefed as RPS, is a quantity-based policy. It requires energy supplier to produce a certain percentage of their total power production from renewable sources within a certain period. These diagrams illustrate the coal-firing technologies referred later in this presentation. The concepts mentioned in the presentation are direct co-firing and indirect co-firing. Europe has been the world leader in biomass co-firing. It started co-firing from early 2000. According to IA Task 32, by 2010, there are 169 co-firing installations in Europe. The number increased further, but dropped down again with the policy changes. The EU policies related to biomass co-firing are Renewable Energy Directive and the Combined Heat and Power Directive. Each member state has its own incentives and the mechanisms. I will use the Netherlands and the UK as examples to demonstrate the changes on co-firing policies and their impacts on co-firing deployment. In the Netherlands, co-firing biomass with coal was first supported by tax credit on produced electricity. Recognizing its potential, the Dutch government began to subsidize co-firing under the MEP scheme from 2003. The subsidy was in the form of a fixed premium on top of the wholesale electricity price. In 2008, the SDE scheme was launched, but the scheme only covered co-firing plants smaller than 50 megawatts without the large-scale co-fire power plants. The SDE Plus scheme replaced the SDE scheme from 2010 and is still in use today. The SDE Plus provides a feed-in premium subsidy similar to feed that covers the difference between the wholesale market price of electricity and the cost price of electricity from renewable sources. All categories compete for the same budget so that only lower cost technologies receive substantial subsidy. The biomass coal firing subsidies were capped to 25 petajoule energy output per year in 2013. 
large scale biomass coal firing was included in SDE Plus from 2015 for an eight year period. Full coal firing proposals worth more than 3.5 billion euros were granted in 2016, which totaled approximately 25 petajoule. There are five coal-fired power plants online at the moment that coal-firing biomass in the Netherlands. NG was awarded SDE plus subsidy to coal fire around 10% biomass at its 70, uh, 731 megawatt Rotterdam power plant. This is Uniper's 1.1 gigawatt MPP3 plant. It received SDE plus funding to coal fire 15 to 30% biomass. MPP3 is a new ultra supercritical power plant with a design efficiency of 47%. As Hammerwick 8 missed out 2016's SDE plus funding, RWE has announced to close it by 2024. RWE secured subsidies to coal fire up to 15% biomass at its two 780 megawatts issuing units. In this beautiful photo is the Armour 9 coal-fired CHP plant. Armour 9 coal-fired 35% biomass under MEP scheme, but stopped coal-firing after the subsidy finished. RWE secured three lots of SDE plus funding to coal-fire up to 80% biomass here. Direct coal firing is the most popular method in the Netherlands. Armour 9 has a wood gasification plant for indirect coal firing, but the system is currently not in use. It can be upgraded and put back into operation if sufficient subsidies become available. Imported wood pellets are the primary biomass used for coal firing in the Netherlands. Other biomass that has been used include wood waste, sludge, Malaysian palm kernel, olive kernel, and so on. As imported wood pellets are the primary biomass used, I used it to represent the Dutch coal firing activities in this chart. MEP subsidies have helped to increase the number of biomass coal firing from 2003 to 2006. A total of 24 co-firing projects were allocated under the MEP scheme. Nearly all of them expired in 2012 and 2013. In 2013, biomass co-firing was capped. And in the SDE and the SDE Plus, no subsidies were available for co-firing until 2016. Therefore, we can see a big drop of wood pellets import from 2014, which represents a co-firing drop. The import picked up in 2017 as SDE Plus granted full co-firing projects. Argus and uh, Hawking Wright both reported an increase of Dutch import um, of wood pellets for 2017. 18, but I haven't got exact number to um, put it here. From the movement of the Dutch wood pellet import, we can see how much the governmental policies can affect coal firing activities. The UK government introduced the renewables obligation in 2002 as the main financial support mechanism to encourage the development of large-scale renewable electricity generation. The RO scheme was used until 2017. As listed on this slide, the UK RO scheme has been subject to a few amendments. It used to be very generous. One rock was given for every megawatt hour of renewable electricity generated, regardless of the configuration. And a supplier could 
fulfill 25% of their obligation using rocks in the coal-firing category. Encouraged by the government subsidies, coal-firing increased rapidly. In order to avoid excessive development, restrictions have been placed both on the fuels used at coal-firing power plants and on the electricity suppliers using coal-fired rocks. This includes introducing bans for the number of rocks issued for each megawatt of electricity generated. Rock changes are listed here, and uh, the changes in the band are on the next slide. The CFD scheme was actually introduced in 2014 to replace RO. After a transitional period, it fully replaced RO from 2017. CFD shows less support to coal firing. Consequently, some coal fired power plants have been converted to 100% biomass firing. For example, four coal firing units at drugs have been converted to 100% biomass firing. The fourth unit at drugs went online last summer. So this table is the list um, to the coal, um, to the RO binding levels for the UK biomass coal firing unit and the, the changes over the years. Unlike the Netherlands, coal-fired power plants in the UK are old and have a lower efficiency than the new built plant. All major coal-fired power plants in the UK have adopted some level of biomass firing, biomass coal firing, and biomass firing, of course. Uh, for some, coal firing has extended the plant's life. Most plants began their coal firing with direct mixing lo low percentage of biomass with coal and gradually increased the biomass ratio. Biomass used for coal firing in the UK include agriculture residue, energy crops, forest residues, and wood pellets. In recent years, imported wood pellets is the most used biomass. This figure shows coal firing productions between 2002 to 2017 in the UK. Coal firing began commercial in 2002 with 286 gigawatt hour, accounting for 2.57% of the renewable electricity generated in the UK. With the introduction of rocks, coal firing rates nearly doubled every year until 2005, in which 2,533 gigawatt hour was produced, accounting for nearly 15% of renewable electricity generation. Due to the changes in the RO in 2006, coal firing decreased in the years following to 2009. Although banding was introduced in 2009, the cap was increased at the same time. In 2010 and 2011, coal firing production increased and peaked at near to 3,000 gigawatt hour in 2011. The rate of coal firing has reduced drastically since coal firing rocks became banded to lower rates and the coal firing lost the grandfathering privileges. As the UK is committed to phasing out coal by 2025, more coal-fired power plants will be closed. Coal firing played um, mostly a transitional role in the UK's path to increase renewable energy production and reduce uh, CO2 emissions. Now moving on to North America. Although Canada is a world leader in wood pellet produ production, its government does not have policies to support coal firing. In fact, Canada does not have any national or provincial binding targets concerning the share of renewable energy in gross final energy production. But Canada did conduct coal firing. Coal firing activities 
were concentrated in Ontario, supported by Ontario provincial fit policy, and owned by Ontario power generation. OPG coal-fired agriculture residues, forestry products, domestic waste, and energy crops. However, OPG closed all coal-fired power plants by 2014. Although Canada will close its coal-fired power plants by 2030 as a part of its strategy to cut greenhouse gas emissions under the Paris Climate Accord, coal still made up 6% of Canada electricity generation in 2016. The coal-fired power plants are located in four um, provinces, namely Alberta, uh, Sash, uh, Saskatchewan, Nova, um, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. There are still interest in coal firing from these, two, these four provinces, especially Alberta, where there are large amount of wood pellets available. The concept of coal firing with coal was introduced to the U.S. as early as Europe. Between late 1990s to mid-2000, the U.S. DOE and the EPRI conducted a series of studies on the fit stocks and operating conditions for coal firing at PC systems in the southern and midwestern United States. But the financial incentives from the government has never been established. In the U.S., at the federal level, only the production tax credit supports renewable energy production with a flat rate of 1.1 cent per kilowatt hour. At the state level, 29 states currently use RPS to mandate power plants to generate more electricity from renewable sources. But none of this support is clearly specified for biomass coal firing at coal fire power plant. IEA Task 32 reported 40 out of 560 coal-fired unit coal-firing biomass by 2010 in the U.S. But um, I can't find um, the um, demonstration or uh, commercial coal-firing activities in the U.S. at the moment uh, for current data. Most of um, the... Um, coal firing uh, before 2010 uh, were on old and small sized power plants. Old coal firing plants used direct method in PC boilers, and 50% of the plants coal fired uh, wood products. Another major biomass source for coal firing is waste real road ties. Coal remains as the major source for power generation under Trump's administration. Coal contributed about 30% of total U.S. electricity production in 2017, whereas biomass contributed 2%. To date, there are still 538 coal-fired units scheduled to be operating after 2020. Of these, there are only 77 units under 30 years old and 158 units between 31 to 40 years old. Given the high productivity of wood pellets in the U.S. and the gas price may increase, coal-firing biomass at coal-fired power plants can utilize some of the wood pellets to reduce carbon emissions and to extend the life for the old coal fleet. Hence, there are still considerable research on biomass coal firing ongoing in the United States, especially on adequate supportive policies. Coal firing in Asia is expanding fast. Apart from China and Japan, South Korea is active in coal firing, supported uh, by RPS scheme. Vietnam and Malaysia also have some coal firing activities. 
China's coal-firing biomass with coal activities started in the mid-2000, but did not progress very far. In order to reduce air pollution from the scattered burning of agriculture and forestry waste and sludge, as well as reduce carbon emission from coal-fired power plants, China started coal-firing again in 2016. In December 2016, the China National Energy Administration, NEA, announced a coal coupling power demonstration program as a part of the Clean Power Plan in China's 13th five-year plan. This includes a series of large-scale demonstration projects on coal-firing biomass at coal-fired power plants. In December 2017, the Ministry of Environmental Protection and the NEA jointly issued a notice for implementation pilot project on technological innovation of coal biomass coal firing generation. The notice stressed that the aim for setting up this pilot project is to use the existing high-efficiency coal-fired unit and their emission control equipment to digest agriculture and forestry waste and sludge. Coal-firing agriculture and forestry waste projects will mainly be based in 13 major green producing provinces and applied to CHP plant. <coughs> Coal-firing sludge and the res residential waste project will use CHP plant from 36 major cities where huge quantities of waste are produced. In June 2018, NEA and the, the Ministry of Ecological Environment announced 89 pilot projects at 84 power plants, including 58 agriculture and forestry waste coal firing, 29 sludge coal firing, and two residential waste coal firing. 56 of the 58 agriculture and forestry waste coal firing projects are indirect gasification coal firing, and the two are direct coal firing. The reason that biomass gasification is a favorite choice in China might be that their lack of confidence on establishing a transparent and reliable monitoring and auditing system to ensure that the quantity of biomass consumption declared by the power plant are actually used for biomass generation. Biomass gasification is expensive, but can easily measure how much biomass is coal-fired. It also has less impact on boilers and ash utilization, especially for straw and other acidic agriculture residues. Uh, however, in June 2018, the Ministry of Finance and the NEA also published a list for um, supplementary subsidies for renewable energy tariffs. It did not include coal firing. China's top-down engineering-oriented approach means that it can set up big goals and reach them quickly. The first biomass coal-firing pilot project had started operation at Xiangyang Power Station on the 8th of September 2018. China Hefei Debe Bioenergy Limited supplied 10.8 megawatt fluid gas gas fire. Japan's incentive support for biomass generation started in 1997. From 2003, utility companies were put under obligation to produce electricity from new and renewable energy sources at certain level or more by RPS. In 2012, FIT scheme replaced RPS. 
FEET requires utility companies to supply a portion of their electricity from renewable energy sources for a fixed period at a fixed price. The fixed period was 20 years in 2017, and the fixed price is re-examined and published every year. From 2017, FEET also requires the project to have a grid connection agreement with the utility beforehand. FIT support is for new plant only. The 2014 Strategic Energy Plan confirms that coal-fired power plants will remain as base load power supplier through 2030 and beyond in Japan. Following the 2015 14 Strategic Energy Plan, the Ministry of Economic, Trade and Industry released the long-term energy supply and the demand outlook in July 2015, which drew up Japan's best energy mix 2030. The outlook requires thermal power efficiency to rise to 44.3% by March 2031. About two-thirds of Japan's current coal-fired power plant cannot achieve this. The plant efficiency is calculated by dividing energy output by fuel input. Biomass is allowed to be deducted from fuel input. Therefore, only coal input is counted as fuel input for a coal-firing power plant. Consequently, a high co-firing ratio would increase the calculated efficiency, helping the plant to meet the efficiency requirement. There are 111 operational co-fired units in Japan at the moment. 70% of them are either supercritical or ultra-supercritical. Although the FIT scheme does not support existing coal-fired power plants to be retrofitted to coal-fired biomass, there are still 29 large coal-fired unit coal-firing biomass by 2017. This map shows where the coal-firing power plants are located. As of the end of May 2017, there are 42 new coal-fired units planned to come into operation by 2026. 17 of these 42 will adopt biomass coal-firing. Many smaller projects plan to adopt biomass coal-firing to meet the 44.3% efficiency standard. Japan's coal-firing plants primarily utilize the country's forest residues. Other biomass, such as agriculture residues and the construction waste, are also used. With the increase of coal-firing, imported wood pellets become important. Concerns have been raised over biomass sustainability. Most plants directly coal-fire low-ratio biomass in Japan. Japan is working on increasing the coal-firing ratio. At the moment, the highest ratio of 34% was achieved by Mitsubishi Hitaki at the 112 megawatt Suma Energy Park power plant in January 2018. To summarize, Europe has 20 years experience of co-firing biomass with coal. Technologies have been developed and the lessons learned. Both the Netherlands and the UK have some policy changes and the co-firing activities have echoed them. Co-firing is in decline in Europe, either closed with the coal-fired co power plant or replaced by 100% biomass conversion. Co-firing has played an important transitional role in decarbonization and the extending plant lives. Co-firing has never fully developed in the United States and Canada due to the lack of policy support. Although there is a massive forestry resource, abandoned wood pellets 
supply and an old coal-fired、mm, fleet. Coal firing is booming in Japan as a result of strong policy support and a stringent efficiency requirement. But some management and technical issues have been raised. China is starting to coal-fire agriculture and forestry waste, and is in the process of developing a supportive mechanism. From this six countries study, we can see that although coal firing is a cheap technical route to partially decarbonize coal fleet, governmental subsidies are needed to make high ratio coal firing financially viable. Support policies, regulatory and economic, are the vital instrument to biomass coal firing deployment. Apart from support policies, Europe has rich experience in tackling technical challenges for coal-firing biomass at coal-fired power plants. Countries with less coal-firing experiences could learn from them. Our center's technical report and workshops have certainly created a platform for knowledge sharing. Finally, I would like to conclude my today's webinar with one simple sentence: Government subsidies are vital to the success of coal firing. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Sing. I will just see if we have some questions here. Yeah, there's one. <clears throat> What are the practical limits on the percentage content of biomass, say wood pellets, to avoid boiler problems? Uh, generally, generally speaking, the low percentage、uh, biomass、uh, coal firing、uh, would be safe、uh, at a、uh, Coal-fired power plant. The、um, low percentage usually is below 10 percent, and it is safe、um, to coal-fired、um, biomass below 5 percent. So,、um, according to Europe's uh, experience. Uh, Above fifteen、uh, percent or twenty percent, you need、uh, modified、uh, boilers. Great. <clears throat> We have another one here.、Um, Torrefaction is available to make a coal-like fuel, but hasn't made an impact. Why has that not been adopted? Torrefaction process has、um, pre-treated、um, biomass and、uh, washed out some、um, uh, toxic sub、um, substance, and uh, also um, condensed the、um, wood pellets or biomass, make it more.、Um, Mm, easy to transportation,、uh, and also、um, easy to coal fired、um, with coal. However, it is a expensive process. It it adds、um, more cost to coal firing process. But in torrefaction.、Mm, Process has been widely used in the Netherlands. Thank you. Thank you, Zing. I have one more here. I understand coal firing is declining in Western Europe. Do you think it has more of a future in Eastern Europe, such as Poland? Yes, certainly. Poland、uh, has announced.、Um, 
the end of last year that they will uh, continue to use coal as their own uh, their main power generation um, sources um, until um, 2030 and beyond. However, they do have um, an obligation to reduce carbon emission. So um, coal-firing coal in Poland is actually quite active. Um, there are a lot of um, research and uh, activities going on in Poland. My report uh, does cover um, Poland, but due to the time limit, I um, didn't include it in this um, presentation. Thank you, Singh. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. And the slides for this webinar will be available to download from the webinar page of our website. And the next webinar from us will be on the 20th of February, presented by Dr. Leslie Sloss. Thank you all for joining us today, and goodbye. <laughs>